Today, anything we want to know is literally at our fingertips. Or even easier than that, on the tip of our tongue. Alexa, Siri, and Google have become our new best friends. The internet continues to grow bigger and faster by the day, but there was a time not too long ago when it didn't exist. For a generation that grew up not knowing a world without Wi-Fi, this may sound downright perplexing. What? A world without YouTube, Netflix, or Twitter? Well, without going into too much detail, let's take a second and look back on how the internet actually began. Basically, it started as a U.S. Defense Department project called ARPANET in the 1960s as a way to share computer data. It became more widely used in the 80s as a way for universities to communicate and share information with each other. And by the early 1990s, the internet that we now know and love was starting to take shape. Now, in the early 90s, when the general public was first able to start going online, the internet looked and acted far different than it is today. Comparing the internet of today to the internet of the 90s is like comparing a Ford Model T to a Ferrari. While today you may get the latest stock quotes, sports scores, or celebrity news in a matter of seconds, this was not always the case. Do you know what this sound is? Well, if you do, then you know that this was the sound the internet made, the dial-up modem connection. Today, the internet is run over broadband through fiber optic cables or even satellite connections. But when the first website was published in 1991, information had to travel through telephone cables. This was the same technology that allowed people to talk on the phone using what is now best known as a landline. Telephone coaxial cables were great when it came to phone calls, but extremely slow when it came to moving data. Dial-up internet speeds in the 90s started out in the 0.0025 megabytes per second range. Today, the average internet speed in the U.S. is around 100 megabytes per second. That's 40,000 times faster. Imagine trying to watch Netflix online back then if it existed. Loading, loading, loading. Even though it was slow, was nothing to compare it to, this new information superhighway was the greatest thing ever. Although at the time, it was more like a bumpy dirt road. Not only has the speed grown exponentially, but the content available on the World Wide Web also continues to grow at a breakneck pace. On August 6, 1991, the first actual website was published for the world to see. It ran on a computer at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. This was essentially the launch of the modern internet. Due to speed constraints, the first websites were mainly text-based. Forget the fancy graphics and ease of use we know today. Online gaming and streaming were not even in our lexicon. As internet speeds increased and access became more available, so did the number of websites. Today, you can surf the web's almost 2 billion websites as if flipping through the pages of a magazine. The world is quite literally at our fingertips. The advancement of computer technology has changed what we do online. In the early 90s, the internet was mostly accessed by universities and businesses as a research tool. But higher speeds meant websites could upload more content, and suddenly information-dense pages evolved into something far more interactive. With the launch of sites such as YouTube in 2005, users were able to stream videos instantly as well as communicate with others. Digital news and media sites have also replaced the demand for print publication. Forget about picking up the daily newspaper. Nowadays, we receive instant news alerts and have access to a whole catalog of articles past and present. But before search engines came around, that information was a whole lot harder to access. Remember what a life before search engines looked like? By today's standards, researching something before the 90s was like looking for a needle in a haystack. You would have to spend hours plowing through the library to find a fact that would take mere seconds with a quick web search. The first major search tool was Archie, launched in 1990. The service allowed users to browse through a single site's file directories, but even then, you could only make very simple and specific search requests. While there were other small engines trying to take hold, none of them had the hold of search tools today. 
Now, if we want to know anything, we expect to find the answer in seconds. Google currently stands in the foreground as the world's search engine powerhouse. But back in 1995, Yahoo was the biggest hit with a user-friendly interface. At the time, the internet was slowly being introduced in schools and homes, and young professionals were turning to the ease of web searching over books. With the advent of Google in 1998, this process became even easier. Before then, users had to go through the lengthy process of sifting through search results that had been stuffed with keywords. Google was prized for its trusty algorithm that filtered out spam results and ranked the most relevant websites first. But the efficiency of web search engines has done more than speed up our research. Not only has it changed our access to content, but also the very way in which we think of content. Immediate access to information is the new and improved norm. Now, the focus on efficiency also applies to the digital economy. The internet has been monumental in expanding the opportunities for businesses by allowing them to reach new consumers worldwide. But before online transactions took hold, shopping used to be a whole other excursion. You would spend a day traipsing through stores looking for something that you weren't even sure existed. There was no digital catalog to browse from the comfort of your home. Shopping today is like having access to your own private viewing at all the stores in the world. So the expansion of the global economy is largely thanks to the creation of a new platform, the World Wide Web. What we're talking about here is a whole new field of competition, one taking place solely on our screens. Without an online presence, businesses today cannot compete on the international stage. Now, for consumers, this has been equally life-changing. Purchasing has truly never been easier. Amazon was one of the first e-commerce sites in the U.S., beginning as an online bookstore and rapidly expanding their product lines eBay's success was close behind in 1995, allowing users to take the reins of both sales and purchases. What we see is the internet expanding the market and opening our access to its products and services. Essentially, what we have is an economy of convenience. Think about it. You can send an email to someone across the world within seconds, and a delivery lands on your doorstep the next day. Easy access and instant gratification are now our top priorities, and the internet provides just that. But it's not just our economy that's changed. The effects are infinite, filtering down into our most basic everyday activities. Think about how our society interacts today. Our social networks depend upon and are mediated by numerous digital platforms. But this all started even before the likes of Facebook. In 1996, the very first social networking site was launched under the name Six Degrees. Its features were basic, but it allowed users to create a profile page and connect with other people. Since then, social media platforms have skyrocketed. From MySpace and MSN to Twitter, Instagram, and WhatsApp, with the digital evolution came the evolution of social media. These sites took communication beyond the basics of email messaging and allowed users to share photos and create bios. Of course, none of this would be possible without the evolution of complex hardware systems. Think about the webcam. This became a revolutionary feature for social media sites and online chat rooms. But its invention was motivated by something entirely different. Back in 1991, Cambridge University researchers were looking for a way to monitor the coffee pot in their break room. They figured out a way to program a digital camera to upload one picture per second to a web page. And voila, the first webcam was born. Of course, webcams today do much more. They allow us to take part in social gatherings and conference calls from the comfort of our own homes. With the advent of smartphones, all these services became a whole lot easier. FaceTime, Google, Twitter, you name it. Suddenly, we could keep the World Wide Web in our pockets wherever we went. What we're seeing is the digital age opening the doors to infinite opportunities. The internet is evolving at an exponential rate. It is now so interwoven in every aspect of modern life that we often fail to understand the extent of its impact. The question is, how far can it go? Or maybe a better question is, how far do we want it to go?
We've got more. Just tap or click for another great video. And remember to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching.